Welcome to the Grasshopper Ladybug tutorial number three. We're going to learn how to operate the basic wind analysis on the Grasshopper today. There are two main wind analysis components in the Ladybug. Number one, wind rows. Number two, wind boundary. They are very useful for urban scale study and massing study. Without a further ado, let's begin the session. Okay, this is where we left our tutorial last time. So first of all, I'm going to change the name from sunlight to wind analysis. I'm going to move across back to the canvas again. I'm going to keep some of these components except this sunlight. So I'm going to grab them all and delete. So I wouldn't need some of these duplicated Boolean components except the vector, which is indicating the north, and the point, which is indicating the center point of the tower. So I'm going to quickly go to number two, visualize the weather data. So there are two components you can find related to the wind. First of all, first of all I'm going to start with wind rows. So this requires quite simple data input vector for the north. So I'm going to turn off this preview for the sun path. So let's find out what other information that we need to put in. First of all, wind direction and the wind speed, which can be found in the EPW of a ladybug data output. So I'm going to grab the speed. I'm going to intake to the speed and get the direction connected to direction down there in EPW. So that's the pretty much all the data that you need to have for the wind rows. The second is that the wind analysis period, which already we set that up for the previous sunlight analysis. So I'm going to use that down here. So the statement for the condition and the other etc etc aren't particularly necessary to turn on. They're optional. The center point Yes, we need to put that in so that we know where to operate this wind rows and the boolean toggle for the um, for the others. So if you want to put the maximum frequency or the show frequency on the rows, you need to have this boolean toggle connected to frequency. If you want to show the average velocity of the wind, you will have to connect the boolean toggle to the wind velocity average to show and the third you need to have boolean toggle for running this particular component so i'm going to turn that on so currently it's not visible and i'm going to turn on this preview then you'll get this rows so if you want to if you want to just turn on the rows you can connect the mesh to the rows mesh and wind rose mesh and the curve to get those circular radial curves and there are other bits that you want to turn on which are the legend and also wind velocity and of course you want to turn on the title too so here you see there are average velocity of each direction So second, that we're going to just quickly move on to the wind boundary, which gets quite useful when you design a, such a building like tower, because the tower is, is extremely sensitive to the wind, and often those are required quite accurate wind turbine analysis. But this is initial study, um, so this level of information will be adequate enough to get the gist of whether you can actually build a tower or not. So. It requires similar data input, so the speed and direction goes exactly the same place. The only difference is that the speed is every 10 meters. And this terrain type, number zero is for the city, and number one for the countryside, and it goes on and it gets flatter. It becomes the ocean for the number three. So currently we set the scenario in the urban context and the rest of things are quite optional other than the analysis period you want to connect that to the the one that we previously set up 
the conditional statement, you don't need to put that in. The other thing that you want to have is the, the center point, the origin point. So we already got the center point of the building. So wind vector scale, you can control the wind vector scale uh, in a different scale. The profile height is something that you want to you want to control. For instance, if your tower is somewhere around 50 meter, then you want to put that as a 50. But currently we, we have a tower of 100 meter. So I'm going to create a 100 mil, sorry, 100 meter for the slider and connect that to the profile height. And the distance between the velocity vectors and the error style. Um, so distance doesn't really matter how you control it, but the wind error style is something that you want to pay attention to. So number one for the three dimensional colored wind arrows and number two is more refined. Number three is line work and number four is black and white. So as you can see, each, each type represent different graphic styles. And the, the associated legend will be created vertically next to it is also color coded. You can change the color of the legend by using the different legend component that you can find elsewhere. So I'm going to turn off the rest and I'm going to show you what you can get out of today's context. Okay, that's it for the wind analysis. Thank you for watching and I will see you in the next tutorial.